Hi, my name's Gordon Bash, and I'm the bassist of Save Ferris. We're here in Chicago, and we're excited to be, uh, what was this, day 28 of our new sound tour. I'm not keeping track or anything, but if you check my Instagram, I'm actually putting pictures up every day. It's keeping me straight. But uh, I've been fortunate enough to show you around the uh, sort of shop a little bit, so I have some gear here that I just wanted to show you. There's a couple pieces that I'm really excited about using this tour. Uh, JT Short from, from the Eden Company let me borrow his his uh, 210 Eden cabinet, yeah, yeah, and right. Eden's gonna be working with me uh, in getting a full rig. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to get the World Tour Pro 900 and get hooked up with various cabinets for our future touring, because this stuff is honestly, Eden is, I'm really pleased. Even uh, Chris, our tour manager, you know, I have a couple different cabinets, but after I've used this combination, he's like, nope, that's the best sounding rig. So that's what we're going to now. Uh, in addition, what I'm using here, which is a little interesting. I'm playing not just electric bass. I've got, I've got my Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray, uh, which I use a sponge on to keep it down, but I keep pretty high action. Uh, I'm running that through the same channel as my Rickenbacker, uh, and they're very different basses. So, so what I'm doing up here in my little brain is I'm using an AB box, and I'm basically just running the Ernie Ball straight through into the pickup. So I'm not using any EQ on it, just what's on the bass. And then, um, and then I'm using this Sans amp just as a, an EQ to sort of even out the uh, the Rickenbacker. The one of the pedals that I, I really like very much at this Aguilar Tone Hammer. Aguilar makes great amps and, and so forth. I do prefer the Eden amps, but this Aguilar Tone Hammer is a. Uh, it really, I'm using it for my upright bass because it has a mid shift, a mid frequency shift, so I can actually dial in on a pedal some of those weird mid frequencies you get with upright bass. You can get that scooped kind of sound. And it helps me because I'm also doing a similar thing where I'm running the upright bass straight into the board. So he can do what he wants at the board, and then I can control it here. Because I'm running basically three basses into one amplifier on one thing. So uh, there's a company called Lely, uh, L-E-H-L-E, -E, that I'm going to, to look at for, they make really high-end AB switches. I've been using... This is kind of like a piece together with some stuff I've had left over over the years just so I can get through the tour. But the neatest thing is it's in a suitcase. See? It's in a cute little, cute little suitcase. I think that's the neatest part about the whole thing. The head, um, Bugera, I will, I will give it this. Bugera, I got this amp, it's, it was claimed to be a 2,000 watt amp, and I got it for like 400 bucks. So I, I, you know, initially I thought, what's wrong with it? I want to get it just because it can't be that cheap if it's that powerful. But honestly, like for a Class D amplifier that's really light and really powerful, this thing has been holding its weight. I'm excited to get the World Tour Pro 900 from Eden because that's like a, I mean that's that's like a pro level thing. But if you're if you're looking for portable, light, and powerful, this thing has really been, really been holding its weight. So uh, so it's it's pretty good. So this is the uh, this is the mainstay of my of what I use in in Safe Ferris, and it's to me it's like uh, it it's the only bass that is the sound. Uh, Music Man. Stingray is the particular sound of this style of music. When I started playing uh, in the band, I, I knew I had to get this. So this was actually made in St. Louis Obispo in uh, 93. And, um, you know, it, it's got all the stock stuff. So it's got the, the, the Music Man uh, soap bar pickup. It has the, the active controls, so it's bass, mid, treble, and volume. And I, I was told twice on this tour already, once last night, um, and... Um, in Detroit and also at Trees in Dallas that that they didn't have to EQ me at all. It had a perfect uh, frequency response across the board. So what, I, what I'm what i doing to make that happen is I have my bass control the whole way up, my mid control the whole way up, I have my treble just in the middle, you know, that little notch, and then I just run full full volume. I'm using the sponge to sort of deaden it because what I do the differently than some guys is I keep kind of high action and I'm using uh, Roto Sound flat wounds. Uh, so, so I'm trying to basically approximate an upright bass on this, so I get a really, kind of like a really dead, a dead sound, something I can really grip into, because when the adrenaline starts going on stage, I need something to fight against, or else I just beat it all to shreds. So the, uh, the gauges of the strings I generally use is, is as thick as possible, so I'm, I'm pretty sure this, is a, uh, this top string is a 50, and it goes down to 105. And uh, sometimes they get up to 110, but in general, when I'm playing instruments, I, I like, on, uh, when I'm using my fingers, I want thick strings uh, that have a lot of tension so that I can really dig into them. So this is, uh, well, th this one was named uh, uh, Maddie, Madness, and this one is, is Rudy, uh, Rude Girl. 
So Rudy hasn't really gotten to play very much this tour because she's my backup. But uh, she's, you can see she's another uh, music man, but she's the uh, sort of the entry level. This would be the squire of music man. And she sounds pretty good, but fortunately I haven't had to use her. I know she's sad, but I'm, I'm keeping her in the shed right now. My true Excalibur is this Rickenbacker. She, uh, O'Shea Recovery, uh-oh, you know, I call her blue. She's new, but she looks like she's been really old. You can see she's neck through, but she fell in New York City uh, many years ago, and this is bent. Now this is the totally different. I use pick on this. Um, you know, she's got the Ricco sound. I took the, the cover off because that's exactly where I pick. But I actually keep this the way they set it naturally. Low action, very specific gauge strings. I can only get these strings from like one, com one or two companies because they're really odd. Uh, but honestly, you know, for the style, I keep this really low and then beat the shit out of it with a, with a pick. So this is uh, this is my soul. This is uh, Elaine, A L A I N. She's I've had her since uh, since high school, you know. So she's she's really old. Uh, what I'm doing here, I've had a lot of modifications done on it, but I'm using a K and K pickup. Uh, you can see FMI bass is a is a store in Pasadena. Fantastic musical instruments in Pasadena. They're amazing. They do everything. Uh, they've done a lot of work on it. They put in a new nut. Um, what I'm doing, which is different than a lot of guys, this is very rockabilly based. So I'm using Weed Whacker strings here and here. This is actually Weed Whacker G string I've had on for about 10 years. Uh, this is an A string that I'm using in this, as the D string because it gives me the tension that I need. And then these are called innovation strings. So they're kind of halfway between these fake gut and steel strings. So I get some sustain, but then these top ones I get a lot of deadness so I can get the good slap but then also get good upright sort of sustain and I'm I also have a realist uh, a realist pickup here that I sometimes use and uh, and you know taping taping the F holes just to keep uh, the feedback down to a minimum but you can see there's holes all throughout this you know all over it but she's still she's 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 lived through and she's she's holding steady so